Hi, this is Leo from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how to answer and or neither type probability questions using a Venn diagram. We will also see how to prove whether events are independent and whether they are mutually exclusive. So in 2012, Pew Research Survey asked 2,373 randomly sampled registered voters their political affiliation and whether or not they identified as swing voters. Here we have the results. And we can summarize these results, 35% identified as independent, 23% as swing, and 11% as both. Part A, are being independent and being a swing voter disjoint, i.e. mutually exclusive? You know mutually exclusive means one excludes the possibility of the other. Since 11% are both, they can both happen at the same time. So logically, it seems that they are not mutually exclusive. To make this a little more formal, we can say that mutually exclusive means that P of A and B equals zero. There is no overlap. They cannot occur at the same time. In this case, P of independent and swing equals 0.11, which does not equal zero. Therefore, we have proven mathematically that being independent and being a swing voter are not mutually exclusive. Part B, draw a Venn diagram summarizing the variables and their associated probabilities. To draw a Venn diagram, we start by drawing a rectangle or a square, and inside we'll draw circles that correspond to independent and swing. These overlap, and so this 0.11 in the overlap here corresponds to the both. Now be careful when you add these numbers in. I like to draw the Venn diagram so that this 0.24 here only corresponds to being in this section here. So it does not correspond to being in the overlap here. So because I know that 35% should be in this whole circle which corresponds to independent, and because I know that 11% are in the overlap, that leaves only 24% to be in the just independent, but not swing part. Similarly, if this whole thing has to add up to 23% and there's 11% here, there must be 12% here. Remember, not all the probability is located here usually. So you can also think about what's outside those circles. This 53% here is what's outside these circles. Part C, what percent of voters are independent but not swing voters. So we can see that drawing the Venn diagram helps answer this question a lot. We can go through the logic again. We know that the probability of independent is 0.35. So to be independent but not swing, we're going to take that 0.35 from here and subtract off the 0.11, giving us 0.24. So 24% are independent but not swing. D, what percent of voters are independent or swing voters? So that means anything in here, because remember or is inclusive. So anything in here counts as being an independent or swing. So there's two methods. The first is we can just add up the non-overlapping probabilities that make up the independent or swing. So we're going to have, in this case, 0.24, that's this, plus the 0.11, plus the 0.12. Those comprise everything in here. That gives us 0.47. Alternately, we could use the formula P of A or B equals P of A plus P of B minus P of A and B. So in this case, we're going to have P of A corresponding to independent. It's going to be the 0.35. That's all of this. Plus the 0.23. That's all of this. Of course, we added the overlap twice. So we have to subtract it off once, and so that's subtracting the 0.11. Gives us, of course, the same answer of 0.47. E, what percent of voters are neither independent nor swing? So they can be anywhere in here, which means they have to be outside here. So that is the complement of the or statement. So the probability of neither independent or swing, oh, this should say nor. The probability of neither independent nor swing should be 1 minus the probability of independent or swing. So that's going to be 1 minus 
the previous probability of 0.47, and that gives us the 0.53. F is the event that someone is a swing voter independent of the event that someone is a political independent. For this, we should go back to the definition of independent. So two events, A and B, are independent. If the probability of the A and B is the product of the unconditional probability. So if P of A and B is simply P of A times P of B, then they are independent. So in this case, probability of independent and swing, we already know to be 0.11. And now we can multiply the unconditional probabilities, probability of independent times probability of swing is 0.35 times 0.23 which is 0 0.0805, we can see that these aren't equal to each other. So these are not equal. Therefore, they're not independent, which is to say they are dependent. A second method is you can check if the probability of this conditional probability equals the unconditional probability. So if P of B given A is the same as P of B, then A had no... Uh, effect on the probability of B at all, which is to say that they're independent. So if this statement holds, A and B are independent. So we can check P of B given A, in this case P of swing given independent. P of swing given independent should be the joint probability of 0.11 over the total probability of independent of 0.35. That gives us this number here. Whereas P of swing is um, just 0.23. So if we know that you're independent, the likelihood of being swing has changed. If the, over, the unconditional probability of swing is 0.23, but if we know you're in the independent group, then the likelihood of you being in the swing group is 0.314. These are not equal, therefore they are dependent. Now you might ask, is this, are these differences in probability just part of random sampling error? For that question, you'll have to wait until we get to the chi-squared test of independence. That's it for this video. For more re free resources, check us out at openintro.org.